frames we can brighten this footage and then the brightness is going to fade out over a frame so what we want is only his face only some of this rock and maybe his arm to be illuminated by the lens flare and uh, just so that it doesn't look like we've literally just upped the brightness. Now there's a few things we can do. In Final Cut Pro 10, you've actually got secondary color correction built into the main editor, which is a great, great tool set to have. What we're going to do is uh, go into corrections, and we can see we can boost the exposure a little bit. Now remember that what we're doing is brightening it, but only certain areas are going to actually be brightened what you want to do is you can see that when you brighten stuff up these colors look a little bit weird so just take away take away some of the saturation in the bright areas maybe boost them in the grays a little bit and we could even tint it yellow slightly um, just to match the flare it's gonna have a, even a little bit more now if you haven't seen, don't know how to use the colour correction tools, make sure you check out uh, my first Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial that covers colour grading. In fact it might, be, it might be my second one, but it's there somewhere. And now that we've created some kind of colour correction, we want to add the mask. Now what we could do is use this tool called the colour mask. Now I will be doing an advanced colour correction tutorial that covers all of these in depth, but for now just bear with me on what they do. Basically what you can do is, is you can drag and an area and you can see that we're starting to make a selection everything that's in color is what we've selected and then you can see that only the areas we've selected have had the color correction applied to it um, but in this case we don't want to use a color mask and um, basically obviously this allows for uh, Sin City effects and other such things uh, which I will do a tutorial on I promise oh that's another thing uh, be sure to leave a comment requesting tutorials. I am now taking tutorial requests for Final Cut Pro 10. Um, how exciting. We just want to delete that color mask. What we want is a shape mask. Now we can drag these shapes here like this and we want one on the arm like that and I'm gonna add another shape mask this is going to be on his face. You can have as many of these as you want. The other thing to bear in mind is that these shapes are keyframeable. So say you had a moving image, um, you can click add a keyframe here and then you can move it in the browser, add another keyframe and actually start to create some animated color corrections which is basically what you do. Maybe. And the other main one we want is the tree, because obviously the tree is right by the gun. And these outer rings is in fact the feathering, you can dra drag it out and that basically adds smoothness. You can see if we drag it all the way in we're actually going to get a hard edge on the colour correction, like that, it's, it's kind of disgusting. Uh, so you want it out a little bit, obviously we've got to watch it on the arms, because you're going to start getting it fading out beyond the actual reach of the arm like that, that's cool and like that because if you have it up there you can see it's now bleeding onto the rock you really don't want bleeding colour corrections um, we can also tell now that really our colour corrections are a little bit over the top so we're just going to go ahead and bring the exposure down a little bit um, and it's still noticeable. And do you remember that opacity animation we added? Now you can see on the second frame they really dim, and then by the third frame the colour correction's gone. And if we deselect the footage we can actually preview it back. This button here, make sure it's blue and then that is gives you loop playback. And you can see already we're creating something a bit cool. Um, the tree is a little bit harsh, like of all of the elements that should have a soft edge, the There we go. Um, we just want to add lots of feathering on the here. Like that. That's looking quite nice. Bam! And again, I do think it's a little bit over the top right. Maybe bring it down even more. I mean, it's still noticeable. There we go. That's nice. And we've got a nice load of feathering on the tree. So it's all looking good. Now the other thing, the last thing we want to do is create some kind of um, 
blowback on the gun. Now what I mean by that is actually the barrel rolls back. Now there's a few things we could do. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to take the footage we've got, going to duplicate it, so Command C and Command V, drag it to the top. Um, now you can see all um, what the muzzle flash appears to be gone. That's just because the layer is on top. The way it works is whatever's on top is above. Very simple philosophy. I'm sure you can grasp that. And we want to crop the footage, so we're going to apply crop. Let's drag these corners in. You can see what we're actually doing is cropping the footage to wherever this window is. And we want to crop it to our actual barrel. Like that. And then let's go into our transform. You can see we can rotate it like that. And we can move it back so we can extend it past the gun. And we want to set this just to one frame as well, so let's trim that. And then we want to duplicate it again. Command C, Command V. And this time, when we trace it with the crop tool, oh, sorry, wrong layer. This time with the crop tool, we're going to get a piece of wood. and drag this in like that and then with the transform tool move it over over the gun like that you can see now we're, we're getting there now what you actually want to do is move this blowback bit even further back so that it's really noticeable at the moment it doesn't look very noticeable beautiful and grab these two layers and make them a new compound clip again for the same reason so that we can add some directional blur and it's not just going to affect the centralized areas and let's just press done here to lo lose our transform tools and we can see it doesn't matter if it points this way or this way really um, just to add the effect what you don't want is it to be so blurry that you can't actually see the blowback at all, but that you can see um, in fact I think we might be better um, compounding each one individually especially the top one the, uh, the bit of wood only because that really needs a lot of blur to blend in And then let's bring this layer on top and make that a compound clip and a directional blur to that. Beautiful. And now, bam, it's firing a gun. And then we can grab all of our clips. In fact, let's uh, get a gun sound effect first. Let's scroll down here. Let's go into this. Our clip appearance, we want to just quickly see the waveform. You can see that it's actually peaking at yellow, which isn't that nice. We want to bring this down a little bit. There you go. You can see now we've got no le yellow bits, um, so we've got appropriate level of audio. And when we play it back, remember we've got our loop option on. If we just trim the, the fade and bring it in. We press N for snapping, it means we can make it the exact same length as this top clip. And now when we play it back, there we go. You can see really quickly, well I say really quickly, it took us 20 minutes, but I wanted to go through everything and make sure you knew what I was doing. Um, now we can select everything, right click, new compound clip, and now 
we have a single clip in our timeline without going to any third party application we have created a muzzle flash that will pass off as quite realistic now if you double click the clip you can see we've actually got our own individual timeline for our clip now this I think is a fantastic feature inside of Final Cut Pro 10 it's kind of like if you're used to Adobe After Effects it's like when you double click on a pre-composed layer and that's essentially what a compound clip is it is a pre-composed layer so you can actually cut sequences together by themselves and you can see we're in our compound clip and we're just going to go ahead and press this arrow just to go back to our timeline but it means that this clip is accessible without having to right click and press break apart clip items we can actually go in and edit it and then if we make it a little bit longer then it's not going to affect our timeline because we've got our wonderful magnetic timeline and obviously the audio which has been um, compounded as well lost for words there um, is now uh, considered audio of this clip as it would be if you imported a piece of video with its own audio as well um, so I hope this tutorial was useful I hope now you can create your own muzzle flashes inside of Final Cut Pro 10 without any other applications without having to dish out extra money and you can see that we've actually very quickly created something cool um, so thank you for watching remember to spread the word hope you enjoyed this uh, you can request a basics tutorial or another advanced tutorial whatever you like um, and I'll be back soon with more tutorials. I'm sorry there's been a delay. I've actually been really ill this week. I couldn't talk. I had a throat infection. But now I'm back. Like I said, I would be. Uh, remember to follow me on Twitter for updates regarding tutorials, uh, which is Twitter forward slash whatever, at AS Productions. A S P R O D U C T I O N S. Simple.